This video is about code it or compartmentalization of decay in trees. It's a model that was created by Alex Shigo, who's a plant pathologist with the US Forest Service, and he dissected tens of thousands of trees. This model explains how decay or damage progresses in trees, and this D can also stand for damage or dysfunction, but decay is how it started out. Let's review a couple of concepts very quickly first. This microscope image of xylem shows the vessels embedded in the wood. Vessels are intended to move water very efficiently up the tree. In this image, you have last season's growth here with the late wood, and you have early wood here. And this is the border of the annual ring. There are also rays here that run across rings and these help to store materials that then can be moved between multiple seasons of growth. Note that the rays can extend just part way. They don't have to extend all the way from the outside to the inside. It also helps to make the wood a little bit more complex so that it becomes stronger. Okay, on to the actual model. It is a way of thinking about how a tree defends itself basically against invasion, infection, attack, or damage. I'm going to use those verbs interchangeably just to mean some kind of outside force that's harming the tree. The C in coded stands for compartmentalization. As you can see here, the model explains that within the tree, you already have a ton of compartments, including the tiniest compartment, which is a cell. Compartmentalization means that just as the tree is made of these tiny little compartments, the way it responds to attack is also by compartmenting it. In the coded model, there are four walls. One, two, three, and four on the outside. In addition to referencing the location or the physical features that make up these walls, it also represents how strong they all are. Wall one is the weakest, and wall four is the strongest. Let's say the tree gets attacked right here, this year. The first thing that's going to get plugged up is your xylem because xylem is designed to shoot water up to the top of the tree. And so wall one seeks to plug up the xylem vessels, either with physical balloon-like structures or chemicals. Here's what that looks like in cross section here. So each of your wall ones would be progressing in this direction as one cell gets compromised and the next one will plug up and so you have a bunch of wall ones. Then there's wall two. I know I said this got attacked here so just pretend that this extends all the way out here. Wall two is last year's growth. The wood towards the end of the season has smaller pores and it's denser so it offers a decent amount of protection. In this cross-section diagram your wall twos will be set up towards the interior of the tree. It's in the previous year's growth. And this is important because the wood is still storing stuff on the inside here that it wants to be able to protect. In this diagram, as something attacks the tree from this direction, the wall twos will set themselves up towards the interior of the tree. Now, wall three. Wall three makes up the side walls. And this is a, these are the rays in the wood. They're alive, they're full of starches, so you can really become active and join in in the defense. But this diagram is oversimplified. The rays do not go from the very center of the tree all the way to the outside. They're not full walls. You can see that a little bit more in this diagram, where it just kind of ends. If the pathogen is coming along this way and the ray happens to end, then it can get around it and start spreading around the tree. In this diagram, you would have the walls three oriented in this direction, and they would extend partially through annual rings. Now we're on to wall four. Wall four is the strongest of the walls, and it's the only one that isn't already in existence at the time of the injury. Wall four is next year's wood, and the wood is going to be chemically and anatomically different. And it's intended to prevent whatever pathogen got into the tree from infecting next year's growth. In this diagram, wall four is indicated by the pink ring here. 
It's preventing whatever's inside the tree from getting into the new tissue. Wall 4 is also called the barrier zone. Any of the walls can fail, and they do. But in the event that every wall but wall 4 failed, you'll have a hollow in the center, but wall 4 will successfully have prevented the new wood from getting damaged. In this diagram, it shows that there was an injury here about 10 years ago, and you had these zones of infection or attack, but wall 4, which formed the year after the injury, was able to successfully prevent any pathogens and things like that from entering the new wood. As long as the tree is able to produce a lot of new tissue afterwards, it can have a hollow center that doesn't completely destroy its integrity. Another thing about wall 4 is that it's a physical barrier between the wood that was present at the time of infection and all the new wood. So normally you have rays that cut across these annual rings, but it doesn't make sense to give your enemy a bridge directly to your new wood, right? So there are no rays that are formed across that. So even though it's better for defense, it's not as good anatomically because the rays make the wood more complex and they help join it together. That wall 4 can also become what's called a ring shape, and that's when enough stresses are applied externally or during growth. The wood can actually separate along that annual ring. In addition to the walls, there's what's called a reaction zone that forms in advance of the progression of the problem. This diagram isn't meant to show that, but I'm just using it to indicate that it's going to keep moving as the issue gets deeper into the tree. The tree is going to start putting out antimicrobial and phenolic compounds that help the tree resist the invasion, and it continues to move. So it's not the walls, but it's a parallel and relevant feature. Keep in mind that this process happens every time the tree is injured. And so you're going to have multiple walls 1 to 4, multiple walls 4 here, and what you want to avoid doing is re-injuring the tree because all of the resources that were originally stored inside are no longer accessible to the outside of the tree. If it happens often enough, the tree can wall itself to death. It won't have enough storage to complete the processes that it needs to stay alive and healthy. Trees are grouped based on how well they can compartmentalize decay. Within the given species, a younger, healthier tree is going to have less of an issue than an older, declining tree. In general, knowing where the species fall is going to be helpful in tree care because you don't want to be making huge cuts on a poor compartmentalizer because it's more likely to lead to significant decay or death compared to something that's a good compartmentalizer.